great example to me is the uh, Obama campaign iPhone application. I think this is a really savvy piece of software. So the campaign uh, put forward this iPhone application. You can download to your phone. And it talks about issues and um, you know, various kind of marketing almost. But the point of it isn't necessarily to educate you only about the, the issues. Because if, you're probably a supporter if you go to the trouble of downloading this. Uh, an interesting section is there's an issues section which has sort of little mini white paper talking points about the environment or a particular policy issue. Part of the design is not just for you to read it, but it's that you're around the dinner table and uh, your brother-in-law says something inflammatory. So you suddenly pull up and hear a list of talking points to argue back uh, for you. So it's a way for you to savvily use this information back again. There's also a, a, a section of battleground states that integrates with your phone book on the telephone. So, you know, Florida is listed. Uh, your grandmother lives in Florida. There's a little button that says, do you want to call grandma? Click it right there. You can call her. Maybe, you know, uh, you could have sort of argued points and then uh, respond immediately right there. It, you know, a question comes up of how did the call go? So that, that means, you know, it's a way for you to use that information presented to you in a way that integrates with your life. So there's a project I work on called, uh, called Diamond Road Online. It's a direct outgrowth of, um, of some of the work of a colleague uh, at the MIT Media Lab, um, Mike Murta and Gloriana Davenport in database-driven uh, documentary, database-driven storytelling. The kinds of stories you tell should make sense in the medium you're telling them. So to tell a documentary online is not a matter of streaming the video and taking a few you know, kind of unedited interviews and sticking them up next to it. That, that's not really paying attention to what editors do, first of all. I mean, they edit for a reason, they take things out for a reason. It's not an understanding of what you can do online, the power of online, how I consume content online. Diamond Road Online is a recommendation system around small content chunks, um, minute and a half long little vignettes that are edited for that environment. And a lot of the learning we did was by working with professional documentarians, professional video editors. Uh, this was video content where we worked with with professional storytellers and they honed their craft for understanding how to tell a story online. How do you present it in different ways? How do you edit in a different way when you know that people aren't going to necessarily sit for an hour and a half and watch this? They may consume it in five minute pieces uh, on a mobile device. They may consume it for 10 minutes at work, you know, when they're bored and then come back to it at a later time. How do you give them and craft uh, an experience which made sense and was whole in the five minute version and the 10 minute version in some way not the whole story, but a whole experience that I want to come back now uh, and experience it with an hour, for an hour or experience it in a community way. And maybe you didn't get a linear experience with a beginning, middle, and end uh, where you've got the whole story the way a linear documentary would. Uh, it might leave some, some open ends, but maybe that has to be okay in an interactive environment. Maybe I don't have to tell you a whole story. Maybe my conception of my job and my role is to tell you some open-ended stories because the internet allows you to then go off from there and you know surf on to other sites, uh, surf on to and, and be part of a you know media ecosystem where if you go from my concept to a Wikipedia article, I know Wikipedia exists. I can design my story to know that that's going to be out there, and you may stop and leave me and go to other places because I know uh, you know Google is a great way for you to get to other content, um, and I'm integrating with your life rather than being the be all and end all of my particular story and my particular documentary. Media is becoming far more integrated in our lives, uh, in all aspects of it. So it's not that there is you know, a work self that can, can consume certain, in a certain way and it's consumption as a model, and then you go home and it's you know, a separate thing and you intersect in some way. We're getting this really kind of uh, fluid relationship throughout the course of the day that's growing. We need to think about the ways where we're constantly consuming and producing. We aren't just receiving advertising messages about content which we go home and consume. We are taking something, taking ownership of an idea, uh, remixing it in our head, even if that's not a you know, remix phenomenon we're putting back out on, the, on, on YouTube. We are taking ideas, sending them to our friends, excerpting something, posting it to Facebook. Uh, you know, I think the model of having a, a, a portal web page that some automated system is pulling out content for you and recommending things. That's not really the way a social being inter interacts with media right now. I get things from people I trust. 
Uh, I get content recommended to me. I get news stories recommended to me. And then I turn around and reformat that and send it out to a friend, mention it in a conversation, forward it in a Twitter, uh, you know, post it in an email, put it up on a blog. To create a media maker in this world, I have to teach programming. I have to teach software architecture a little bit. I have to teach uh, graphic design. I have to teach interface because every media production they put out there, it's not like they can say television exists, it, it works in this way. I, I don't have to really think about it, you know, plasma screen versus black and white might be, you know, sophisticated as you need it to be. That's not true anymore. Every media creation they make, whether it's a dramatic story, uh, a documentary, news and information, they need to understand that it's going out in these various directions. It may be an iPhone application. What, what, what the iPhone application documentary is, I don't know, but I know it's not the same as a television documentary. I know that you need to understand some specifics of this device. Uh, how do people use it? Where do they use it? And you craft a version of your story for that uh, reality. A media creator, if they can internalize uh, being able to think of this as an application, a media application, then they're able to understand experience design, they're able to understand user design and, and interface design. They're able to understand sort of crafting a whole experience with everything that that means. But hand in hand with that is, how do they monetize that? Because there are different platforms. Online is not marketing for television broadcasts. That's not the reality anymore. It may be, but there may be a new broadcast model. There may be a new financing model. There may be a new sales model that exists because you know, you can pay for a download of an iPhone application. Maybe there's a micropayment model. Maybe there's a sponsorship model. Maybe there are two or three things you tie together. That is custom to your media project. That is custom to the experience you're making. There's not a single model that works for every project. You can tell different kinds of stories. You can reach people in a different way. You can reach people for different amounts of time. Uh, you know, you do something that's maybe got a game element growing from a storytelling perspective of whatever it is you do and you may not be doing a one hour mass media thing, you may be doing a smaller audience for 30 hours. The most obvious way is they're destabilizing everything. Uh, I don't see that as purely negative. I think we're going to go through a period of upheaval in a lot of ways. But I don't think that upheaval is because people don't like stories anymore. Is long form drama going to go away? Is quality investigative journalism going to go away because the way we fund it now is in trouble. Um, my response is there isn't less interest in that. There is a trouble with the infrastructure that we use to get that. So, you know, if you complain about piracy or what people are bit-torrenting online, the problem is not that no one's consuming this kind of content. The problem is that they are consuming it. They just have another set of uh, tools in order to get to it. So we're going to go through some period of upheaval and our cultures will change and our sense of relationship and our business practices will change. We're going to see flexibility uh, and agility be part of the new sort of way model we deal with content. <laughs>